every day is a day of thanksgiving. How many of you have something to be thankful for today? I don't know about you, but I've got so much to be thankful for. I will thank and we praise God for another beautiful day that he has given us every day, not just this past Thursday, but every day is the day of thanksgiving. Those of us who are people of God know that we have a lot to be thankful for. If I can pass this mic around, everybody in this place would be able to list a multiplicity of things that you are thankful and grateful for. Let's just give the Lord another hand of praise for the many blessings, amen, that he has bestowed upon our lives. I hope you had a good Thanksgiving holiday, amen. I had a good, a good holiday. I, I admit I sinned. I sinned. I sinned, since Clinton, I sinned several times, but I thank God for his forgiveness. You know, overeating is a sin, gluttony is a sin, um, but the Bible says that confession is good for the soul. So I confess and I thank God for being a forgiver of sin. If you confess your sins, he's faithful and he's just to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness and ham and turkey and dressing. <laughs> You'll do it if you will. Won't you please? Amen. We thank God for our online congregation, those who are watching us from far and near, those who are traveling. We want you to know that we are praying for you, that you will make it safely to your various destinations. We thank God for traveling grace this past week. But we are here. We were off last week. We are back in the saddle Wednesday night, 6.30 p.m. We will be sharing in Bible study. We're going to do at least two Bible studies. We normally take off during December, but I'm going to do at least two Bible studies um, during the month of December. So I'm looking forward to that. The first will be this coming Wednesday night, and then we may skip a Wednesday and come back the following Wednesday. We'll We'll see how we'll plan that out. Let me say thank you to everyone who played a part in our church's 84th year anniversary. We thank God for 84 years of ministry for the kingdom. Thank you to those of you who shared uh, in the assessment by paying your $100 CD. Those of you from far and near who have done that. There's some people who are watching who um, a part of our online congregation who have also been a part of the giving. We say thank you so much to you. If you just didn't have it then, but you have it now, it's never too late to be a blessing to your church. Amen? Amen. Reverend Marcus Perry is going to be sharing the word of God with us today. Let's bless God for him. I'm asking him to share message on this morning. I want to publicly thank him as I already have privately for his faithfulness to our ministry this year. We know we were out for a little bit, but uh, our young people are back in the saddle and I want to thank him for the leadership that he provides for our youth ministry and for the many sacrifices that he has personally made. You know, some people do a whole lot of talking Talking isn't worth much. Usually the people who talk the most do the least amount of work. Amen. You don't hear a whole lot from Reverend Perry, but he's working behind the scenes. He's making financial sacrifices to make sure that our young people have whatever they need. Uh, when we plan a fun day for our young people, Reverend Perry was the first to say, hey, let me, let me be a blessing and let me give towards this effort because I have a heart for these young people and I want to see them have a good time. Amen. That's admirable, isn't it? That is admirable. So thank you. Thank you so much for your faithfulness to our church, for your faithfulness to our young people. We will hear from Reverend Perry 
after the first team has sang their next selection. Uh, our church is in mourning once again uh, by the passing of Sister Cheryl Gordon. We will be sharing in her homegoing celebration tomorrow at 11 o'clock a.m. Sister Gordon used to sit right back there with her son, Michael. She has been ill for quite a bit of time. Uh, we funeralized her husband here, uh, Brother James Gordon, maybe three, four years ago. This is a bit, I can't remember. I know you, you're good at keeping up with that stuff. Uh, but we want to just celebrate her body. We want to celebrate her faithfulness to our church. Because even in illness, she was faithful. She would set her times and be a blessing to the church. So we want to uh, celebrate her life tomorrow. Those of you who come out at 11 o'clock, 8 a.m., we want to make sure that she has a good homegoing celebration. Her son Michael has planned it, and uh, we're going to do our very best to um, adhere to what the family has planned. I don't know about you, but I'm ready to hear the word. I'm ready to hear the word of God. I need to be blessed by his word today. And we certainly have someone who will bless us with God's word. And what I like about him is that he doesn't try to be anybody else. He delivers the word of God in his own way. Amen. He's not a copycat. He's not an imitator. Marcus Perry is just real. And so I want him to bless us on today. We are ready to receive what it is that God has placed on your heart. Give the music ministry a hand as they come to bless us, and then we will hear the word of the living God. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, we came to bless the name of Jesus. We came to praise the name of Jesus. How many of us this name is strong? How many of us this name is mighty? This name is powerful? This name is above all things.
And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. In order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace, expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved from your faith. And it is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not by work, so that no one can boast. You may be sitting real pretty, and I want to speak from the title, The Gift. All right. I want to speak from the title of The Gift. Yeah. Yes. Everything we ever been taught tells us that you get what you earn in life. Uh, that there's no such thing as free lunch. That you make your bed and then you lay in. Everything in our lives is predicated on the performance. If you want a promotion, you work for it. If you want to make a big purchase, you pay for it. If you want a sales reward, you post the numbers. If you want to succeed, you got to make it happen. Most of us have been become pretty good at making it happen. We earn a good living. We live in nice homes. We live with heat on and the winter and air on and the summer refrigerator full of food, cars are full of gas, and nobody's saying nothing. And we have the attitude we can make it on our own. All right. Because we work for it. And that is what we call the Protestant work ethic. And the only problem with the Protestant work ethic is that God doesn't operate on the Protestant work ethic. And it's so difficult to relate to the way things work spiritually because we are so used to earning our way. Yes. Most of our lives we've been told that Nothing is free. Everything costs us something. A day to the movies or a dinner can easily set us back a hundred dollars. All right. An unplanned trip to the ER can cost thousands. A broken relationship yeah. or a divorce can add up with years filled with anxiety and depression. So it's hard to wrap our minds around something that is actually and you may ask why, and it's simply because we're always looking for the bottom line and asking, what is the catch? Romans 6.23 says that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now for those of us who have asked Jesus into our lives and accepted his gift of grace and forgiveness from sin, there is no catch. Salvation is a free gift yeah. from Jesus. Yeah. But still yet, we try and earn salvation. Yeah. And, and one way we try to earn salvation is by working. You've met the type of stressed out Christians that nobody saying that who are always involved in every ministry, in every Bible study. They never say no to ministry or opportunities. They build their schedules with good deeds. And the result is a life that's filled overwork and under reward. Serving this church is an important part of following Jesus. But what is the motivation behind our service? Do we serve because we love Jesus and love his church? Or do we believe that all our good things, the good things we do, will cancel out any sin in our lives? And the idea of earning salvation totally goes against the reality that salvation cannot be earned by our good deeds. It's a deal. Secondly, we try to pay down our debt with money. Mm. All right. And I'm here to tell you that there's not enough money in the world to pay down the debt our sins. All right. All right. 
For some of us, the first response to a problem that seems overwhelming or messy is to throw money at it. Ain't nobody saying it, but I know I ain't the only one here to have that. Hurt someone feelings that don't know what to say, you buy some flowers, ain't nobody saying it. Two years to a next time, you give money instead. Giving money is easy, but God don't want our money. He's after our hearts. That's why I'm trying to buy something that's free. Paul declares that we are saved by grace through faith. Now, in order to understand what we have received, one must see grace for what it is. Grace is God's unmerited faith. Grace is extended and provided to those who don't deserve it. Grace cannot be bought or earned. Grace is provided through God according to his divine will. Grace is more than a nice sounding concept. It is something we need every day. But, but, but just as we want God to extend grace upon us, we have to be willing to extend grace upon others. Time to life, the grace day that showed the fifth chapter in 2 Samuel 9. Remember the shepherd fell was the son of Jonathan, and Jonathan is the son of Saul. Saul had been the king of Israel for many years, but had become distant from God and no longer listened to what God had to say. Now Saul saw the king of David. When he found out that David would be king instead of the son of Jonathan. Now you, you may think that being hunted after wood have made David upset at Saul. But even with the opportunity presented themselves, David did not harm himself. And after David had become king, he asked, is there one any left of the house of Saul? The answer was yes, the son of Jonathan, Mephibosheth. Now while David was king, and could have done anything he wanted, he chose to show kindness to Mephibosheth. Right. David showed kindness 